Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Sitting there up in uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, where you pack the car in the garage. <laughs> right? And where everybody's retarded. Retarded. <laughs> I never uh, I never thought you had a you know a, a, a Massachusetts accent. You well, were, when I would come home, I, I, you know, don't forget, I lived in Europe for a couple of years yeah. before I moved out west, so I, it kind of diminished over time. Yeah. But, but now that I'm back here, my accent is back. It starts coming back, huh? Yeah. So you're packing the car in the garage again? I am parking the car in the garage. <laughs> so uh, how's everything up there? Um Everything's everything's you know good. I mean, I'm, I go for my second shot a, a week from today. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah, the Pfizer, it, Pfizer or Moderna. Uh, Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, they 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 have a good product. Yes. Uh, you know, it's really it's they, what. You've had your second vaccination, yes. Oh yeah. 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 Um, as a matter of fact. I have a, a little thing on my phone now. It's a passport. And it, really? It, it, yeah. And it says that I've had my second shot and, you know, expires in about six months or five months. And it's uh, it's cool. It's really cool. You know. Really? I got a card that goes in the wallet. Yeah. Well, they'll probably start this thing up there, too, where it's on, a, it's on, your, it's on your iPhone. And it's actually, I think it's more reliable because they go to the database in the state to get the information to put into your card that you show people on your phone. Right. You get what I'm saying? Whereas there are people going out now and uh, forging these cards. Is that right? Yes, yes. There are people running around selling the cards for a price. Yeah. So The government says they're going to clamp down, though, because it's a CDC card, which makes it a government card, which makes you doing fr something fraudulent with government paper. Right. It's a it's yeah. it's a federal. It's a fe it says it's a felony. It's a, it's definitely a felony. Yeah. So listen, I you know you know something I never really, I think in all the time, that I was doing those radio shows in San Francisco, I never asked comedians like about where they came from and how they were raised and what influenced them and so on. Okay. Now, now what I know about you is you were raised in Massachusetts in Concord? Uh, Worcester. Worcester. Why do I keep thinking Concord? Worcester, like the, uh, like the sauce. Like the sauce. <laughs> well, that's Worcestershire. Right. And why don't they call it Worcestershire? It's spelled the same way, I think. No, it isn't. It's spelled W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R. Oh, okay. And that comes out to Worcester. Worcester, okay. And the other is Worcestershire sauce. But anyway, right. so you were you were born there, and, and right. what kind of neighborhood did you grow up in? Um, Middle-class neighborhood, lots of kids. Yeah. You know, all baby boomers, the whole neighborhood was full of kids. Yeah. We're all within, like, you know, three years of each other. Yeah. Because because your fathers came home from the war and then screwed their brains out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. basically. That's what a baby boomer is. Um, right. You know, uh, I uh, but uh, so so it was it was it was it a happy childhood? I mean. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I remember mine, which is a few years earlier than yours, and the times we grew up in. My God, compared to today, were simple for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was a much simpler time when I grew up. Absolutely. Much I mean, we didn't even lock the doors. 
Well, I remember my parents used to say, hey, Mom, I'm going to the movies, and I had to walk a mile down to the movie theater. And right. I'd go to the movie theater all by myself, and I was like maybe nine years old. Right, right, right. What? We would walk back and forth to grammar school, which was about a mile. Yeah. What parent would let their kid walk to school that far anymore? None. None. They, they drive them to school. Right. They drop they them up. They pick them up. Right. Yeah. But us, nobody was worried about it. Occasionally a kid got kidnapped. You heard about that. Right. You know, but th th nobody was really worried that any harm would come to their kid if they, you know, just... No, just if they thought no harm would come to us in the back of the station wagon with no seatbelt. <laughs> yeah, or in the front seat with no seatbelt. Even worse. Right, right, right. But in the way back where it's just like a cargo area and they'd stick the kids. I remember a friend of mine had an Oldsmobile. I think an Oldsmobile station wagon his parents had. And in those days, the, the, the dashboard was metal. Yes. It was pure, unadulterated metal. Yes. Right? And in the middle of the, um, of the steering wheel, they had a rim that you honked the horn with, a little rim that went around it. But in the right. center, on the Oldsmobile, was this big, pointy, sharp thing that kind of stuck out like it was a pyramid, you know, it was really fancy. Right. And I can't imagine how many people impaled their brains on that. Well, that's know? just like, Alex, I don't know, the automatic braking. How many people have gone through the windshield over that thing? Automatic braking? Yeah. Uh, well, but, but what happens is today, if you have the automatic braking and it happens and it's too abrupt, uh, your your bags are gonna go, right? You know, so you're still safe. But in those days, I mean, how how anybody even survived a car crash is beyond me. Right. You know, right. First right, of right. all, they didn't they they bump their head on this metal dashboard, and then they pierce their forehead, do a uh, uh, you know lobotomy on themselves with the steering wheel. There you go. There you go. There's a nice. That's a sales pitch. Yeah, but we, but our parents didn't really care. Uh, they, they okay, go on, you know. Or mom, I'm going out to play, and then you, I would go climb up in the hills, in the forest, sure. you know. And my eventually, parents. Eventually, my mom had to get a cowbell, so that we could hear her from the distance, and when we knew it was time to come in for dinner. Right, right, okay. right. Yeah, yeah. So, That's the only time you came in. You came in to eat. And then you went out to play until the street lights came on. That's right. And in the summer, you got to stay out in the dark. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it, so, so, I mean, parents weren't as worried about the kids then. No. And kids no. Ha had a certain freedom to go wherever they were going to go. And I remember, you know, I used to go out, I, I used to go out, I used to climb in the hills. And then it was dinner time, I came home. And they kind of thought I was kind of like the dog, because the dog also wandered wherever he wanted to go. And, right, and when right, it was, right. When he got hungry, he came home. Right, you right, know? right. So I was That's kind of in part. there with the, with the dog. The dog know? would just scratch the back door, and you just let the dog out, and it came back when it came back. Yeah, well, I remember I had a cat, and we had this kind of in the bathroom. We were, uh, w there was a window that was kind of like, a, you know, one of these windows that kind of just kind of tilts out. Right? right. So we right. always left that open. And the cat would come in and out there. So we knew oh, the really? cat was home when we would hear thump, thump. Because <laughs> he would jump down to the counter below and then onto the floor. And, oh, the cat's home. See, these are things that, when you remember them, were so simple. Oh, yes. And, you know, if you're a kid growing up today, I don't know if you're ever going to have those kinds of memories anymore. Well, do you remember all you needed was a can to play kick the can with yeah. all the kids in the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. You didn't need to go to buy the can at a toy store. No, <laughs> yeah. no. And it was electronically in place. Yeah. Kick the can. I, I don't know if I ever played kick the can. I did. Really? Yeah. yeah we played another game called The Great Escape. 
It's basically hide and go seek. Is it, isn't kick the can kind of a kid version of soccer? If you think about it, you'd have to really stretch. Well, you'd it, have to it, really it, I know stretch. I just made soccer fans get mad at me, but you know. What kick the can fans? Kick the can fans? Yeah. Yeah, they're mad at you too. We we should have kick the can in the Olympics. <laughs> you know? Right? Right? Well, that would be open to everybody, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you know, it was a, you you had a pretty good little childhood then. Most most right. kids in those days did. I mean, unless they came from very very poor families, and even if you were very very poor, you did have the out, outdoors, and right. you know, the outdoors were free. Right. And so no matter how poor you were, everybody had the outdoors. Right. You know, but today they don't have the outdoors that much. You know. No. Mom, I want to go to the park. Well, I'm I'm busy right now. I'll I'll we'll go down later. Right, 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 right. Whereas we would just split. We just split and go to the park. You know. I mean, in the first grade, like I said, I'm walking a mile each way to to grade school. Yeah. Now speaking about school, were you a good student? Up until my junior year in high school. Really? What happened in junior year in high school? Me and our drugs got even more uh, <laughs> cozy. It go, got cozy, huh? Yeah. So you were a good student, basically, up until that point. Right, right. And then I went to an alternative school where I became a good student again, and I graduated with my class. Mm -hmm. And then I went to UMass. Mm -hmm. and then I went to Paris. So I studied for seven years before I got to San Francisco. Yeah. Now, in that time, were you doing drugs at all? In France, just smoking pot. Uh huh. But that was it. Mm hmm. Okay, that's fine. You know, I mean, yeah. I, uh, I, I, we finally come to the notion that pot is kind of a somewhat benign drug. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want somebody to be on it all the time. I was talking to Pearl yesterday, and he says he's he's smoking pot all day long. And I go, how can you do that? You know, I use it for recreation. Have you heard the term recreation? Right, right, right. You See, know. I use it for sleep. I do too. I do too. Uh, uh, it's in fact, uh, I don't do it for any other reason. My wife loves to have her little joint every day, or have a couple of puffs off a joint, and she right. goes, "You want some?" I don't know. Uh, I'm not, but come. Two o'clock in the morning, and I'm feeling like I can't exactly sleep. I go do a couple of hits off uh, off a joint, right. and I'm out uh, out like a light. Yep, me too. Now you say you do pot to put yourself to sleep, but you're a person who we could say is a drug addict, right? We can't just say we 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 own it. We own it. You, I am you, a drug you, addict. You are a drug addict. So how does that how does that work with you with marijuana? I guess it doesn't have the same effect, right? No, and like I said, I, I don't abuse it. I've been doing it for years. Yeah. I just I just don't abuse it. I don't smoke it all day long like Pearl. Right. right. You know? Plus, that wasn't your drug of choice, was it? I mean, when it no, came to No, no, not home. really. Yeah. Because that was an old argument about marijuana. Oh, well, it's the next step to a better, a worse drug. It's a, gate, it's a gateway drug. Well, it's only, it's not even a gateway drug. No, but that's about, what they called it. You know, uh, I I said to somebody once when they said, "No, marijuana isn't a gateway drug." I tried marijuana, but it didn't do it for me. Right. So I kept going till I found something that did do it for me. But I was going to find it whether I went through pot or not. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Uh, uh, well, you say that in when you were a sophomore, you you got into drugs, right? Or Junior year junior was year. the worst year. Why then, and what was the reason? I mean, do you, when you look back, and I'm sure you've done, you've, I don't know if you've gone to shrinks about this, but sure. you probably have. What, what, what do you tell them? Can you see your reason why all of a sudden you're a junior and you're getting high on stuff you shouldn't be getting high on? Oh, uh, what, 1973? You know, the war was coming to an end, and peace, love, and drugs, and rock and roll, and... 
I had a long, long, long hair and, you know, bell-bottom hip huggers. And I uh, was just a drug addict. But was there something in your personal life that triggered it at all? I could use the middle child syndrome if I wanted to. Okay. Do you middle, know? Do middle child, middle child children? Middle child. Syndrome. Mid, my, right. m middle children have a problem that way? I, d I don't know the middle child syndrome. Tell me about it. Well, like my older brother, my parents lost two before my older brother survived. Mm -hmm. So he's the golden child, right? Yeah. He's the golden child. And yeah. then I come along 15 months later, and I'm just like an appendage to him. They dressed us like twins. Yeah. And then my younger brother came along three years later. He's the baby. Yeah. He's the baby. My brother's the golden child. Wait, wait, wait. Me. Hold, hold on a second. You're having a few problems with your signal. Uh, that, uh, talk to me now. Okay, how about now? Well, I can hear you, but you're frozen. The picture is frozen. But keep going. Really? It'll, it'll probably clear up as time goes on here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, you know, my older brother's the golden child. My younger brother's the baby. Mm -hmm. And what am I? You know, so the only way I could figure that I could get attention was negative attention because it was still attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was immediate. Yeah. Wow. So I was the pro. So he, there was the gold. Oh, see, we lost him. We lost him. Oh well. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this thing on pause for a second till we get him back. Well, I think we're gonna have to continue this on another day because it seems like um, uh, Steve is down. In fact, uh, I have him on the phone here. I, I guess you could hear him if I say hello, Steve. See, that's Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> our, our, um, let me see here. Let me just put it on, on the speaker. So I want to say, I guess should say goodbye to you, I guess, huh? I guess, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I mean, we had no way of, uh, the, I think your internet is down up there. So, right, Yeah. right, because I can't even get into Chrome. Right, well, I've got you, I'm pointing my, my iPhone at the uh, the microphone, so everybody can still hear you. Oh, okay. So we'll continue your life story next time. All right. Yeah. Uh, so say goodbye to everybody, Steve. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll fix this problem. Yeah, As, uh, and uh, that's the technically proficient world we live in, folks. Now and. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, you know, it's one technical, tec technical, technical, testicle difficulty after another. Oh, boy. Oh, God. And, and I'm tired tonight. I am so tired. I don't know what it is. I'm just tired all the time. Oh. Mm. I went out for a walk today. <laughs> And it was difficult to walk. I mean, it wasn't uh, wasn't easy. So anyway, so I'm going to try and do a show tonight. Uh, people call, please, tonight. Um, I, I'm just, I, I have my questions as to whether, you know, I, I keep questioning whether I should keep doing this. I really do. I'm, I'm very serious about it uh, because the amount of listeners is less than it has been. And I don't know if that has a lot to do with the fact that when we, uh, were, when we had Trump in office and uh, we had a lot to yell and scream and, and get hostile about, that it didn't make for more interesting, if not, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, it, it just made for more agita, and somehow people, I suppose, like that in their talk shows. And, um, I mean, I'm so happy there's no Trump. I mean, it's just, it's easy, you know? But uh, if if that's going to cause us to have less listeners and stuff, I go, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted when I do this show at night, and I don't know why. I think it's because it's later in the day. And last night, I, I kept waking up all night long. I got to bed late, and then I got up uh, about two or three times during the night. So I think I probably was pretty restless in my sleep. So, you know, when I'm tired like this, uh, why am I doing a show? 
you know? Why am I doing it? I have no idea, you know? And uh, so now I have a, an hour to keep going here, and uh, there's, not, there's not a hell of a lot to talk about. But anyway, let me bring all these people on, and uh, we can, uh, we can uh, then uh, uh, just uh, hope that they, oops, uh, you see what happens? I gotta, I, gotta, uh, I gotta change the view here to gallery. There we go. And uh, life is, uh, is better. Um, hello, the, wait a minute. Brian Neary isn't there. Jeff is there. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan is there. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, 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 Charlie's there. And of course, uh, Trucker Steve and Rocky, and his, uh, who's his dog. And Bullwinkle, nope. who's his moose. You know, he's from, <laughs> from Canada, so he's required to own a moose. And, um, well, we'll wait to see what happens with. Uh, 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 let's see here. Camera, it's all well, blurry now. Po Polish Scott is coming here. This is, uh, I believe, this is the Scott. Yeah, this is yeah. not to be confused with Scott Boddicker, by the way. Under no conditions. That is, uh, that is a different Scott altogether. Here comes well, jo Josh. It's the same Scott. You guys just got me mixed up with Scott Boddicker, so uh, I'm Polish Scott. Yeah, I know. You're Polish, Scott. I yeah. see. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Josh uh, is there. Hello, Josh. How are you? And, Good. How are you? And uh, Josh Wheeler. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 John Larkin out there in California. I hope you're all fine this evening. Oh, look who's wearing his shorts. It must be warmer out in California tonight, Brian. Yeah. You know? San Francisco is cold. It never is got it over cold? 60 today. Oh, well, look, Brian Neary's wearing shorts. So, you know. He's going to go 20 miles better. outside of San Francisco, and it will be like 20 degrees hotter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, how are you all doing tonight? Uh, anybody? Uh, let's see here. Once again, you're, you're again where, Scott, in Ohio? I'm in Ohio. Yeah. You're in Ohio. So is, so is Josh. Uh, maybe you should just get together and visit each other. I'm yeah. Northeast Ohio. You're in Cincinnati, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Uh, What's on your wall? I live, I live south of Columbus, maybe about south 25 Columbus. minutes. Yeah. What's What's on your wall? Scott? Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Oh, what's on your wall, Scott? On that wall. Oh, that wall? Me? Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I have those are all Blu-rays. <laughs> That's why you called the show. Yeah, he wants your Blu-rays. Yeah, yeah. I, I had at one time about 600 CDs, but I uh, archived them all digitally. Um, took me about a year, and they're in a suitcase. Well, suitcases. that's what I did with all my DVDs. Yeah. you know, I I took them and uh, I uh, uh, I went ahead and uh, and and took about the gosh maybe. Two, three hundred of them, and put them on into files, and then it just takes so long because you got to almost do it in real time. You know, it, it takes a long time to to to, to do each one. But uh, uh, you know, there's no reason to have DVDs anymore. You know, it's a complete waste of space. What? So you can brag to people and say, "See, I mean, if I lower this, you can see my collection." See, uh -huh. and that's just part of it. But uh, let's put up the window again. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. I love. Yeah. I love do. I love doing that every day when I come in here and I have to raise that. I like to just watch it like come into view. You know. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I'm I'm exhausted again. I don't know what it is. I'm just tired all the time. Uh, you took a walk today. Huh. You took a walk today? Uh, did I take a walk today? Yes, I took a walk, and it was very difficult today. For some reason, it was hard for me to walk. I, I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, I took a walk, and it was no real problem. Once I got, you know, about a couple of blocks and my legs, I got my walking legs going, I was fine. Hmm. So I don't know. You know, it just, uh, who knows? Who knows what the problem is? Yeah, I just, I give up, you know. I love Zoom. I was on a Zoom meeting. I was perfectly clear. Got off it. Listened to you and Stephen Kravitz for a while. 
back on it. And on the show, I was blurry, so I rebooted it, and here I am. Yeah, well, they are you're looking pretty good. Yeah, looking pretty good. I, you know, I, I, and don't take this wrong, uh, Alan, but uh, every now and then, members of the audience have somebody they want to dislike. I'm fine with the fan club, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I don't take it. I don't take it wrong. You told me not to worry about it. Phil told me not to worry about it. Yeah, uh, I got a letter today. Oh, I went when you finally got rid of Phil. I could listen to the show again, and then there, then all of a sudden there was Alan. <laughs> you know, and I wrote him back, and I said, he said, so I, I can't, I can't listen till he's not there anymore. And I said, well, nice having you as a, as a listener. You know, have fun. Yep. Because I hate it when people do that. I hate it when they did it to Phil. You know, yeah. don't think that you're you're making me suffer by telling me that if I don't have somebody on, you're not going to listen anymore. So don't listen. Yeah. You know? Or call and argue your point against Alan or whatever your gripe is, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 If I ain't saying Alan. Well, yeah. If that's the only reason you're not going to listen to the show, then fuck you because I should be enough reason to want to listen to it. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah. You we know? don't care about the ones that's You know, so I mean, that's that, 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 And I, I, I refuse to go along with people who have that kind of attitude or to, or to co coddle to them. That's yeah. why I never, uh, people always said, why, why don't you get rid of Phil? So many people complain about Phil. And I went, because when I say, call my show, and people call my show, provided they're uh, decent enough, you know, I'm not going to, why should I kick them off the show? Because you don't like them, you know? Right. You who never comes to the show. Yeah, yeah. And, and to that person who wrote me, you know, fuck you. You'd never call the show. Why don't you be the guy that comes in and adds a little value to it? Yeah, but, give Alan a hard time in person instead yeah. of on the sideline. But also, yeah. I just, I just, uh, you know, I've, I've always been very resistant when somebody says, I don't like them, don't have them on the show. Then I just book them twice, you know? <laughs> really, you I'm serious because yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't like that, you know? And it, it makes no... Uh, it makes no sense to me, and I'm not going to. I'm also not going to give in to it as well. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, it's nice that I have a fan. I read the thing, the side text sometimes too, and they're like, "Oh, the new Phil Allen." Well, you know, okay. And there's a lot of differences, but uh, there is a lot. There is a big difference between Phil and Allen. Phil was a right winger. Allen's a liberal. Yeah, middle of the road liberal. Middle yes. of the road liberal. Yeah. So I mean, Absolutely. what do I have to have on? Um, uh, 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 oh yeah, libertarian. Let's get a libertarian yes. on here. Yeah, you should be happy with that. Uh, I always thought libertarians to me always were the um, unitarians of political people. You know, <laughs> that kind of middle of the road. You know, I. We've got to try and keep every religion happy by our oh. our our. I hope nobody here is a Unitarian. Okay. <laughs> you know, and well, I mean, you know, at least three of us are Jewish. Well, three of us are Jewish, aren't we? Well, Jeff is Jewish. I'm Jewish. You're Jewish. Right. Uh, Kevin's Jewish. Charlie's Jewish. Uh, <laughs> Josh Wheeler's Jewish. Right. Right. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, so uh, where are you tonight, uh, uh, Trucker Steve? Hillbury, um, Ontario. Oh, so you're almost oh, home. You're Canada. Oh. So you're almost home. Oh. How, when are you going to be home? Tomorrow? Yeah. I was just at customs for two hours because I got into secondary inspection. You don't look Latino to me. I okay. went through my truck. Ooh. And the load. Idiots. Why do children's they? Children's toys and candy. What was what was it? Children's toys and candy. Children's toys and candy. Oh boy, it. yeah. That it looks, probably was all made in Canada. That looked suspicious uh, to them, did it? Looked like you were bringing a whole pot load of weed, right? Oh, well, maybe they thought I was bringing trucks. I don't know. Oh boy! You look like the type. I'm yeah. kidding. Oh yeah. If I I'm if kidding. I when I think about <laughs> drugs, I think. Uh, uh, it's the uh, it's the Windsor 
Windsor Detroit crossing. I've been in secondary inspection three times in the last four times I've crossed there. Mm. Oh, really? Why is they that? Is there, is there something going on maybe that is causing them to be overly suspicious or do they just, is it you in particular or what? I don't know. A lot of drugs come across that border, I would guess. So, yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't make every trucker a drug dealer or a drug transporter. That's right. That's right. It's uh, random. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. I think it's a random thing. I'm not. And you won't get bothered for six months, probably. Right. Yeah. Well, he's. You've been. You seem to sound like you've been bothered a lot lately, like this, right, Steve? Well, mostly across uh, Port Huron and Sarnia, which is about an hour and a half north. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I chose to go to Detroit and Windsor. I don't think I'm going to cross here anymore. Why? You know, I... South Detroit is Canada. So that journey song is, is incorrect when they say, you know, what do they say? Just a small town boy. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, so do, can you get, when you cross a border like that, like in California, for, for truck drivers in California, they go through a truck stop. And if they have an inspection, uh, in the truck stop, they usually give them a sticker. I'm not sure if this holds true anymore because I don't know much about it. And they put it on the window and they can pass by the truck stops because they're a safe driver or something. Or no. the rig is safe. No? No, you got to... Oh, that's, no, that's not the truck stops, the inspection stations. Yeah, oh, it's inspection okay. like, uh, DOT. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll put a Sorry. sticker on the window. Yeah, now they got pre pass uh, what is it, Kevin? They not have every now? company has pre-pass. They got pre-pass now. You get a little transponder. Yeah. And if you're good, good standing with the company, you know, with your company and stuff, that helps. Yeah. Uh, now, but they do inspect you. They they keep you on a record, and you can pass by. Um, if they give you the the beep on a transponder, you can pass oh, I by. See. I always wondered how that happened. But didn't you? Didn't you uh, but if the light goes up and they say all trucks stop, you have to pull in. Okay. Steve, didn't they? Didn't you? Uh, for a while there, you were not. You were not uh, using your truck. You were using somebody else's, right? Steve. Uh, yeah, but that was just for one trip. Oh, okay, so you're not just back to using your rig, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. always better to use somebody else's car or rig when you're hauling drugs. And that way, if it gets compensated, it's no big deal, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Hmm. I think everybody got that. But anyhow, so, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, let me see here. So, as I was talking about it, you know, it's not like it's big news time, you know? It's not like we have a lot of news happening. I mean, we have well, news. Did you watch the uh, trial today? Yeah. Yeah, a little I bit. I think that... Uh... Tubin put a couple of nails in the coffin there. Well, look. That guy was great. Look, I don't think there was any way, there's any way possible that that uh, uh, Chauvin is going to be found not guilty on some no, level. But, you know, that 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 uh, witness there was just excellent the way he just laid it out. Yeah. The doctor? Well, last, you know, still, doctor, yeah. still, we don't know what the defense has up its sleeve. They may have their own doctor who's just. I don't know how they can get around that one. Well, they might have a doctor who's just as convincing, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I saw. I don't know. I, yeah, that's their, their doctor. The defense has is going to say that he's been using drugs and the drugs had some effect and blah 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 blah. But, well, those are yeah, all but probably they just, true. They just disproved that today. Oh, really? Oh, Quite well. That. Yeah, Quite well. I missed that. Well, yes, but you haven't heard the other side yet. That's no, the point I haven't I'm heard making. the other side yeah. yet. But they yeah. did a damn good job disproving what. So there's what, I so far. This, I mentioned this I last remember, time. There I'm not a, listening to MSNBC or I'm not listening to CNN. So you can argue with me on you all you want. Well, no, my my, know, my feeling is my feeling <laughs> is that um, uh, Jack will jump all over my ass. <laughs> my my feeling is is that <laughs> not, he won't if you don't call him. Uh, uh, that, that um, you know, that the, I saw that guy today, and yes, he was very convincing, only there was something about him that was off-putting, and it was that damn beard. There was something wrong with a guy who wears... A tip, 
he huh? was a typical, a typical, sit in the lab kind of dude that just picks apart shit. He was great. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I think it's going to be a very hard case for the defense to make in uh, in Chauvin's favor. Uh, is, but we but, don't. But we don't know what they have up their sleeve, and we don't know what witnesses no, it's, they it's have. And they true. may. They may very have true. their. They may have their own expert that comes on that says, "No way, this he died from this," and give you the same kind of exposition that this guy did today. But, but right now, you know, it's the. Um, well, it's, it, 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 the idea is for the defense to put doubt in somebody's mind to change that one person. Yeah. And, and you think that, they take the that he's doing that every time they they cross pro, cross examine. That's mm -hmm. being done every single time. Yeah, and he's not doing a bad job doing that either. Yeah. Do you think he'll take the stand? No. Chauvin. That would yeah. be a bad suicide. Move. Yeah, that'd be a bad move. Well, you have your he, hand up, Alan. Taking a lot of notes. He's taking a lot of notes, so maybe. Oh, he's, he's writing a book. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, he's gone through about six legal pads already. So as a former police officer, you can go look at the raw video on YouTube uh, from the time that the cops, their 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 body cam, uh, and they show the video of how him kind of acting a little drunk in the liquor store where he tried to pass the illegal $20 bill. The kid called, the police show up, they got their body cam on, they go in, they get the bill, say, where's the guy? He's across the street sitting in that black SUV or blue or whatever. The cops go over there. And they try and engage him in a conversation, and the guy is like, you know, a mess. He's rather high or drunk. I don't know what. But in any case, they get him matter. out of the car. They get him out of the car. They handcuff him. They search him. And he walked, the, the officer walks the, the uh, 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 Floyd back across the street to his cruiser. And they say, we're going to uh, put you in the back of this SUV. And he fights them. I mean, he's not physically fighting because he's handcuffed, but. You know, oh, I'm, I'm claustrophobic. All the things you hear all the time, as, especially when people are under the influence of something. Doesn't matter. Okay, but well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, it, it may, but it, I, I'm not, believe me, I, I don't, I think this officer was in the wrong and should go to prison, that is bottom line. But so up until the point where they put him on his face handcuffed and he said he couldn't breathe, they should have turned him over because if you put your hands behind your back like you're in a handcuffed position, it pulls on your chest muscles. And a lot of people, when they're laying flat, cannot breathe. This guy was already hyped up from rather the drugs or his anxiety or I don't know what. Doesn't but, but yeah, it doesn't matter. They should have rolled him over and talked nicely to him and calmed him down. Mm -hmm. And then say, said, you're going to go to jail. It's this way. Instead, the bad things they did was the two things. Obviously, the knee on his neck. I don't know if it. By the way, let, let's mention the audience is listening to this. Alan was a policeman. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, taking taking well, Okay, taking. So, I, I think until the point where he was face down, and people go face down in handcuffs sometimes to stop him from struggling. But, but until he started saying that he was having trouble breathing, they should have turned him over and assessed him and they didn't and the other officer asked Stobin or whatever his name is Chauvin a, a nut job we ought to turn him over because the handcuffs pull on the chest the muscles mm -hmm. and he may not be able to breathe and the guy said no he's a big guy we don't want to do that and put his knee on his neck the knee on the neck and the lack of turning it over lack of turning him over <clears throat> is what's going to put this guy in prison yeah, <laughs> he deserves to go there. I don't Nine know if the guy's a racist or yeah. not, yeah. but uh, his his procedures were totally off base. You know, I feel hey. who I felt a little sorry for was the one cop there, and I don't know which one he is, who was the newest cap cop of the bunch, and he was there, and he kind of the Chauvin was kind of his trainer or whatever, you know. Yeah. So he went out with him along with the other cop. I always felt yeah. a little sorry for him because. Really, he was new. Uh, he's going to be deferential to this guy who's been on the force for, what, 20 years, right. however long. And he gets caught up in the middle of this whole thing. Well, that, things happen. Shit yeah. happens. And, stuff. <clears throat> and, and he was, I don't think he was in a position to say to Chauvin, hey, don't do that. That's right. Okay. That's right. You know, because he would have just, they wouldn't have shut up. You know. Yeah. 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 Just pay attention. Not, huh? Yeah. 
One one thing that I say is thank God that there was all those cameras there because Absolutely. I have a lot of black friends and some of my best friends are black friends and man, you know, if, if the cameras weren't there, there's another dead guy and the cops would have said, oh, he was hyped up on drugs and he was resisting and all this stuff, you know, and this stuff's got to stop. So I'm, I agree, I'm, Brian. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I've had, I have black friends and I've had black friends. And they don't. They say you don't know what it's like walking down the street in fear when the police drive by and look at you and stop you and search you and you've done nothing wrong, but yeah. you've got to be cool with them or you end up in jail or shot or something. Well, this is what every you know. This is the talk that black parents have with their kids. I hope so. You know, which yeah. is if a cop stops you, don't sass him, don't make trouble, don't do anything, just you do whatever he says. Early? You know, but did you ever get that? Is that talk, uh, uh, Charlie? Yep, I gave that talk to my son too. Yeah, good, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a shame yeah. anybody has to give. Absolutely, that's that right. talk to their kids. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I didn't. I never stopped anybody or or did anything to anybody. Based, we had a we we had a few blacks and Asians, but mainly Latinos. But I treated everybody the same. I mean, I guess, and I still and, do. And that was like crap, folks. That's so, right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyhow, yeah, I, you know, it's uh, I, I, I have seen racist officers and I don't like it. It, it uh, makes me cringe that people. Yeah, can, well, you know, I'm not I'm not uh, on Chauvin's side in this deal. On the other hand, no, I, 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 again, I want to see him get a fair trial, you know, yeah. and yeah. and that in order to do that. We shouldn't make any judgment till we've heard both sides, you know, and they send the jury off to make their decision. Maybe then you, we could sit here and discuss, you know. And I, I quite know. frankly, you know, all of this doesn't look good for Chauvin, you no. know. But no. I think what even looks worse is I don't think his legal defense team is all that good. But, you know, you have to remember, here's the thing that bothers me a little bit about a case like this or any case like this. How much money does that does the prosecution have to, you know, to convict this guy? How many lawyers unlimited. do they have? Unlimited uh, dollars. Unlim and unlimited uh, legal yeah. people. That's right. Meanwhile, it's whatever Chauvin can afford. Right? Yeah. Am I right or wrong well, on that? Well, the you know, in, in, like around here in California, you belong to a police union, and if you're charged with a crime or something that you did on duty they supply lawyers so you don't have to pay for no, it even if they it. think you're guilty as hell it's a case like this and they think, everybody deserves a defense like you say oh I no i that. absolutely you know but i i think the guy was totally by not turning him over and they got body cam where the guy it shows the guy laying down and say i can't breathe i can't breathe they should have turned him over and checked if it was really breathing or if it was anxiety or what. And they didn't. They refused to. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that in itself is really bad. And then, you know, and then putting your knee on the guy's neck. I mean, it, well, we put our knees on our knees. And his face for nine minutes, his face was like stone cold. My, qu my question is, my I question, can't understand yeah, that. My question is, he was dead. would the incident with, uh, with George, George Floyd have gone somewhat unnoticed if there hadn't been a camera there shooting it like it is. Probably. You yeah. know? I mean, I think that's what made the case that sensational Absolutely. and created the whole Me Too, you know, Me, uh, the whole of Black Lives Matter um, uh, movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, it, it, it's... Um, excuse me, my eyes are burning today. It's allergies. Um, it's really... Uh, and, and so that changes the whole tone of this thing because you've got this video and they're showing it over and over again. They're showing it in slow motion, still frames, everything, you know. Then you've got all the ancillary camera stuff like the body like cams. one or two. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget. I mean, you could literally probably take this whole incident and put it together as a movie with different, you know, with different angles and stuff and close-ups and it... it it, if it wasn't that well covered photographically, it might have not become the incident that it did. It's the guy still would be dead, and this would be something that goes on every day of the year in this country with police who 
are, are racist, yep. but, but in the big difference here is you had this just horrendous video of what was going on. You so, see that cop sitting there on the guy's neck with his knee, with his hands in his pockets. What is that all about? Well, they're gonna go. They're gonna go back into this this cop's uh, history and find out if the majority of people he arrests are black, but and there may be a good reason for that. He may work in an all black sector or area, but they're gonna find out how many complaints he's had against them and by what race, mm -hmm. how many times he's hurt people and claim that it was their fault and they were black or Latino or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're going to look into all this stuff. Well, let me, let me tell you this now, that I uh, used to work in Minneapolis. Oh. And uh, I rode with a group called the Black Patrol. These were a bunch of black people, black men, who protect, they drove up and down Plymouth Avenue, which is the main uh, street in the black area of town. And they said, why don't you come out with us some night? Take a ride with us as we patrol the area. And I did. And what I saw was disgusting. You know, I always thought of Minneapolis as this bastion of liberalism. You know, you have the DFL up there, the Democratic <clears throat> Farm League, and all of that. And what I saw was some of the worst racism I've ever seen in my life. People yes. driving down the street okay, people driving down the street, shooting guns out their windows at people, okay? And, and in one case, this woman's walking down the street, and these white guys pull up and try to pick her up thinking she's a hooker because she's black, and she's a woman, and she has to be a hooker, you know? Uh, and, and so it, it, you do this stuff, and it really, you know, so start seeing this stuff, then you realize that Minneapolis was this very racist town. And I said, why do you guys have to patrol it? And they said, because the cops won't. So, I mean, I learned my lesson about Minneapolis back then. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, uh, you mentioned if there hadn't been so many cameras, I often wonder what things would have been like with Sandra Bland if, if there had been cameras recording what happened to her. She just got pulled over for not signaling a lane change and ends up committing suicide in jail that night. Yes. Where was that? That was in Texas. That was in Texas. Yeah. When was that? A couple of years ago, two or three years ago. It was long you, before. You know, two, it's four. amazing that in just, I think, maybe the last year or so or two years, a lot of that has changed because the spotlight is on the cops finally. Yeah. Well, you know. and, and the others, too. The Ahmad Aubrey case, that stupid idiot who chased him down was videotaping it. Oh, yeah, they, they taped it themselves. Yeah, the stupid rednecks, they're so stupid that they videotaped it, and they, the guy said he was following him, and it happened, and they drug him down, shot him. You know, from that, all these videos that are coming out. Just Well, very we, uh, the, what's changed a lot of, of the police being able to get away with what they got away with for so many years is the fact that everybody has one of these, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and in this is a high-resolution camera, better than almost any camera I ever owned when I was doing photography, certainly better. Uh, and uh, so people have these, and as soon as something is happening, they've got it on. It's rolling. Yeah. Surprise, you're on candid camera. You know, and, How old was and the kid I think who, what? How old was the kid who actually took the the good pictures at the beginning? This was a young kid, like, wasn't it? The teenager. I think she was like uh, fourteen or fifteen. Right. Yeah. 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 Like that. yeah. Yeah. Seventeen, I think. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we had if we had uh, iPhones today, and the Kennedy assassination happened. We would have much better coverage of that yeah, than, we, than we do than the Zapruder film. I watched a documentary on that. He that's he was the only guy who had. Alex, what are the chances of anybody having a camera that he had out there that day? Well, like people had people had home movie cameras, and oh, uh, right. this was an event maybe that a home movie camera person would want to document yeah. because it's the president of the United States coming through and a very popular <coughs> president at that. 
And what do you think that cost them back then? That had to be a high price equipment, no? Like, nah, uh, I mean, those, I mean, you could buy, you, you, uh, I, don't, I don't know what Zapruder was packing, but uh, you could do that with a, what they called a brownie. Yeah. I, think yeah. was, I think it was 16 millimeter. Was 16 millimeter? Okay. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty expensive back in those days. Yeah, though. but I mean, you couldn't just pull out your phone and start shooting. <laughs> and I, I years ago, I was interviewing uh, Dan Rather in uh, New York. And I said to him, I said, you know, with the way things are going, probably every moment on the face of the earth is being documented every second. And I think that's true now. I mean, there, there's it got to be cam. There's got to be how many cameras rolling right now, and on top of that, add to that the CCTV cameras. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. that adds to more video and information. So that really, in in, uh, in where is it in in, in London, uh, the cops can literally follow a human being through the entire town as he walks and turns corners and things like that. Sure. So we're we're in a day and age where none of this nobody can get away with any of this stuff anymore. It's I think not being identified. exposed. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, in a good way, uh, the people that took a videotape of Rodney King, I think the world woke up and said, "Wow, we all have videotape, and now we can keep the police in yeah, check." Yeah, but Rodney King, stuff. Rodney King was somebody with a video uh, 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 who had a little video camera camcorder, sort of camcorder, camcorder. Yep. Uh, right. that that he stuck out the window. That but, was yeah, the but, beginning of it, but that was the only shot of it. Right, yeah. right. Today, there might be five different cameras that shot it, at least, yeah. you know. It's just that oh, everybody's yeah. packing a camera now. Absolutely. By the way, we should say hello to our latest acquisition here, Turd Ferguson, whose <laughs> um, a first name I can't remember now, Turd, and I don't like calling you Turd. Yeah, you know? I'll, I'll figure out how to change that. I'll... Yeah. So I... I oh, see in the uh, in the in the little chat here going on that my favorite fan is Jessica Bowlingball. <laughs> <laughs> she writes all kinds of neat things here, and then uh, you know, and then we got Tyson Zacosta that doesn't like John. I guess John Wheeler. She makes fun of his last name. These are real winners, aren't they? Well, you know, the thing is, the thing is that I got to say about that is that um, uh, this person is saying, Alan, it's not necessary to be the person who speaks after each panelist. It isn't a two-person panel. Uh, well, I disagree with her. I don't think you're that interruptive. I think there are times like right now where you feel you're an expert on the subject and you were, you were a cop. And you say what you got to say, but then yeah. you know you you back off and let everybody else talk. I don't find anybody else find him a problem that way. No, I think Alan's very informative, but he yeah he gives yeah. A, a great perspective. You know, Thank you. I don't I don't think I he was saying something. Jeff, you, talk all night. What what were you saying? What were you saying, saying Brian? I said that's Jeff's opinion, and he never talks all night, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, Jessica Bowles, you never call the show. Yeah, all, right? just, all yeah. you do is you write, which is hiding behind uh, the uh, the uh, the troll curtain, as right. it were. <laughs> you know? well, let's, rip, let's, rip let's, let's rip all the chat. Let's rip all the chat. Let's rip all the chat people, and then we won't have anybody listening. Then it's only us. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I, I let's see here. Uh, but we have forty-seven listeners. Hey, this is 47. a good chat. Forty-seven. Oh wow, we're we're Ooh, hitting it big we'll tonight. Talk some more shit about him. Also, uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm not making fun of Josh's name. I was joking around. Alan says Tyson yeah. Acosta. Oh uh, good. Yeah. Um, that's that's fine. Why even write something like that? You know, I think you're lower than dog shit when you write. Something well, like now that. you know <laughs> about Josh. That's a, oh, yeah. Break it up. Okay, you're you're lower than uh, my foot. I don't know. Yeah, not about me, but about Josh. He's yeah. easy going. You know, I mean, come on, he's a smart guy. Whatever he came to equating story. human beings with pond scum? Whatever happened to that? I I ask <laughs> you, uh, Josh. Uh, have you 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 haven't been watching the trial, have you? Oh, really? Yeah. It works too slam. I mean, I all my guys are sick, so they're all out. So. Uh, and there's and there's too much of it, there's too much of it to watch. I mean, you know, I well, yeah, I mean, it's during the day, and I mean, 
I mean, like I said, I was in there 14 hours today and uh, finally going to get tomorrow off because I actually got a few things lined up to help them. But I mean, all, all my daytime guys are all sick with COVID and whatnot. Really? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Got a lot Ohio of is very yeah. bad. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have anyone on days uh, on my shipping side. It's all just backup guys and all that. So, mm. I mean, I, I just been, I've been totally, totally slammed. I mean, I hear the highlights and you know the kind of summary in the morning when i drive to work and i'm listening to cnn or the news channels or whatever so i mean i'm i'm i like to know what's going on how do you have, how do you think how do, how do you think those news operations are doing and covering this somebody here wrote that jesus he said i think the wall to wall cable coverage of the trial is excessive uh how do you feel about that john and anybody yeah, else too. I mean, I, I think they're, I think they're all over it a little too much. I mean, it's the trial of a person, you know, who committed a crime. We're on trial for murder, but not like I don't. It's not first degree murder or anything. I mean, even if it was, look, it's one trial of a police officer in an area. I mean, I don't really know why it's like super national news i mean i don't well i think it's i don't, it, I don't think it would be super national news if it didn't get the coverage initially that it got that caused yeah. the black lives matter movement to really get into yeah. high gear i mean like i, I get it, you know it has relevance and everything and i don't have a problem with some coverage ever I, 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 and i'm not saying it's not important i mean it's super important i don't think it i don't think it's, it to be honest with you folks i don't think it's any more important than a lot of other trials that have taken place in this country of policemen who have missed who have abused their power and have killed people in the process and have been put on trial but somehow you know, those I, never wound up getting wall to wall coverage on a, on yeah. a CNN I mean, I, I but this has been on, going on for years okay right yeah um, yeah i mean I, I think they're on you know to you know get people to watch it or whatever i mean i, I don't know why it's why they stream or you know they're not even streaming it i mean it's all you know on well you know it's kind of strange though what's worse msnbc who's running it wall to wall all the time right. you know yeah. and just hyping it like crazy and having right. all their guys going oh here's breaking news uh, somebody just yeah. sneezed on try on, at the trial yeah. and then fox who hardly ever covers it <laughs> you know, I mean, what? Where? These are the two extremes, yeah. and they're both political statements. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I think it's news. I just don't know that it's like the dominating news that it's being, you know, made into by some of those channels. Well, I, mean, I think it. I think it dominates because the, yeah. the incident was the beginning of a very strong right. movement was. called Black Lives so, Matter. So yeah. it's it's like it's hard for me to say that because people might take it the wrong way or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not uh, very important or whatever. I just don't know that it's like the trial or even the news event that it's sort of being, mm -hmm. you know, made it. I mean, they're they're act, I mean, they're on it like you said, twenty four seven, like it's you know, fucking nine eleven or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that's all. John John Larkin. Yeah. Did you hear about this um, this Paul Pierce guy? He, you know, he, he, oh, he he's a, yeah, it got future NBA Hall of Famer. He gets hired by ESPN to do color commentary. And, um, you know, he, he was pretty good. He's a pretty good, but they fired him because he put on his own Instagram, a picture of him, you know, smoking joints and, you know, kicking back with some uh, strippers, you know, looking at butts. Big deal. So they fired him. But did you hear uh, one word from Fox, you know, stick, having his back? For culture, you know, culture, cancel culture. culture yeah. yeah, yeah, they didn't fucking stick up for him, you know. Come on. Well, I mean, uh, no, listen, they've got the they've got their own agenda, and they stick up for. I mean, I'm wondering when they're going to start standing up for Matt Gates. Yeah, you know. Well, I'll tell you, if it was a white guy, white basketball player, you would hear it be 24 hours Fox News complaining about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what do they do? They let him go because he went out with uh, some strippers or hookers? He, he, or? He, no, he was having a party with his buddies. They were smoking reefs, and they had a couple of strippers there, and they were just fooling around. Well, come on. Reefer, Reefer is legal in, what, 16 states now? Yeah. yeah. Come Ooh. on. What's the big whoop? You know, that's yeah. why That's why I really got to hit, hit, hit uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Biden with the whole rap on the fact that he let people go because they had smoked, they found they had smoked pot, not in their offices, not in the White House, but in their private lives. Yeah, how stupid. And huh? I'm telling you, uh, 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 President Biden, uh, uh, you know, that's very unhip to do because in this day and age, it's no big whoop. And, you know, if they were smoking it while they were at work, we could say, well, if you were drinking at work, that wouldn't be accepted either. And that wouldn't be considered mm -hmm. right. Um, How many of these people have bottles of liquor in their office? Exactly, before? exactly. Yeah. But I mean, if they were smoking pot at work, oh. yes, I could see that. But the fact that they simply had a history of smoking pot? Come on. Please. You know, that's enough for me not to vote for Joe Biden again, but then who am I going to vote for? Matt Gates? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that was humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt Gates, uh, by the way, is a... a what, did you see, the, who was it? The, uh, there's, a, there's a guy who was a friend of his who was arrested last year oh, for, tra oh, yeah. for, for trafficking in women. Good. Huh? Yeah. That's the guy we talked about last night. No, that's not the guy who's the marijuana guy. This no, is no. another guy altogether. He's oh, been he guy. was he was arrested six months, seven months ago. Yeah. And he is about ready to plead guilty mm. uh, to m m not as harsh charges, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And his lawyer was out and uh, they said, uh, well, you know, what is your is he going to do it? And he said, "Yeah, he's probably going to uh, going to like accept, uh, uh, admit his guilt, and accept what he gets." You know, and he said, "But this must not be a happy day for Matt Gates because he can't be sleeping well, <laughs> because apparently this guy has goods on him." Mm -hmm. You know, so. But that's that's why he's making a deal so he doesn't. You know, they don't. I don't him. see this guy back Trump like it was his brother. I don't see Trump coming out and backing this guy now. Well, he no. wouldn't give him. He wouldn't give him a, uh, um, a what do you call it? A uh, he, he he wanted a, pardon. Uh, pardon. a, a yeah, but a unconditional uh, pardon. In other words, for anything that might come up, right. he goes right. out and robs a bank. He's got a pardon. You know, right. yeah, I don't think he can do that. <laughs> do not go to jail. Yeah, but uh, apparently Gates knew that there was some stuff coming up on him. You know. Yeah, he was going to get caught with some little girl in his house. Yeah. Mr. Ferguson, how do you feel about some of this stuff? Uh, no comment. I, I, I don't really care what happens down there, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have, have you been following this whole Matt Gates deal? No, no. I've been watching the Masters. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. Did they move it? Is it in Georgia? There was rumor they were going to move it. Yeah, you can't move the golf course. <laughs> By the <laughs> way, the golf courses. if you're, if you're interested Trump's in the Masters, course. I want an answer to this question. Why the cops aren't telling us exactly what went on with Tiger Woods and that oh, accident? He's speeding now. Like <laughs> they say he was speeding, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's all he, they know. Yeah, too fast for conditions. He lost control. Yeah. 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 Apparently, yeah. That, I knew that the day he got popped, he said right. he, that they said he was speeding through the parking lot, and that's normal for him. Yeah. yeah. Is he just a is he just a a, a lousy driver? I mean, is he? A, yeah, he's a, a dick. He's a dick when it comes to driving. <laughs> or you think he's just a dick? You know, his his Pretty ex much. wife chased him to the. I guess they were getting a divorce or something. Chased him down. And yeah. he got in the car and she yeah. broke all the windows with what? Not a baseball bat, like most of us. A golf club. A golf club. I love it. <laughs> oh, it was thank it was Thanksgiving and his freak on the side kept texting him. Oh, yeah. okay. He yeah. got in the shower and oh. they text. Yeah. Here's my booty or something like that. Did when she, you come to get it? Did she do it with a mashie? Did she do it with a mashie or a nine iron? That's the question. Wood. <laughs> The wood, yeah. The wood. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I knew it was something like that, bro. I didn't yeah. remember. The I, I, th do you think? Do you think his career is pretty much over now? I think he's done yet. What do you think, Ferguson? Since you follow this, he's stuff. got as many screws in his leg as I had. Yeah, he's pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't told us what the extent of his injuries, have they? Uh, oh yeah, he's got he's no, got, they, they, he's got they, screws in his legs. He's got a bunch of screws in his legs. Yeah. I mean that 
that can be taken out, but did he get out of the hospital? It ain't good. How does that affect your? Uh, now you see, in this, how little I know about golf. Okay, golf. Uh, but uh, how does that affect your your playing? Can, because you can't wow. stand correctly. Because well, you got to pivot yeah, you on that push leg. off yeah. on the swing. Yeah, yeah. You got to pivot yeah. on that leg. Yeah, I think he's got what is it, left leg back. or is it right leg? I think it's right leg. And I think it back. Both of them, you got to pivot on. Ferguson, do you have any comment on that? He's oh, muted. muted. Yeah. Huh? No, no audio. No audio. We don't have any audio on you. There you go. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, well, I'm going to figure this out. There we go. Well, there we go. There we go. Got it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, you think he's, do you think he's ever going to be back in contention again? Oh, hell no. No, maybe in the senior tournaments. But yeah. 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 It's hard to golf with a cane in one hand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the not, Kevin oh, no, wait a minute. But if you use the cane as a golf club, maybe you're okay. There you, you know, go. Put, put. Anyway. Um, You'll see him at all the miniature golfs in the country. Yeah. Uh, Scott, what do you think? You've been very quiet. Any comments on any of the things oh, that we're talking done. about? Who? I, Tiger Woods is done. Now, physically, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Yeah. 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 And I was actually, when they say he was speeding, I expected faster than 80. Hmm. My assumption was he's going a lot faster, but then they said he was going like 75, 80. Yeah. That's what so he does in the parking lot. He doesn't yeah, he damage the car. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. like 40, and he was doing 80. So, so there's a way to find out, and it's called skid marks. And if he didn't break, nobody's looking at my. Back. Nobody's no, looking at. Wait, nobody's looking at my they underwear. Also get the, I knew this was coming up. Nobody's looking at my underwear. I'm you can sorry. also find out how fast he was going by looking at the the black box, uh, the, the readout from the computer from the computer. Yeah. Now wait a minute. They talk about a black box back, in a yeah, car. Yeah, that car had the black box. Yeah. Oh, okay. How many cars had? Do. Wait a minute. How many black ca cars had black boxes now? Most of them do nowadays. And why do they call them a black box? That sounds racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. Two hundred and thirty thousand dollar car has a black box. Let's see. Yeah. Je okay. Jessica Bowles is now writing that Alan's humor misses the mark by a mile. He's not funny. So when somebody else makes a joke slightly subtle, Alan always says humor to try and make it seem like their humor is as lame as his own. Yeah, I read that too. <laughs> yeah. It's well, you, 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 but you could back off a little bit today. You're a little rambunctious today. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the same about you. Oh, hey, sorry. Or, hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Who's paying for this? Huh? <laughs> um, humor. Humor, but you knew that. Yeah, but I mean, I was going to make a black box joke, but then you made it, and it, I'm glad okay. I didn't actually, to be honest <clears throat> with you. You know, they call them black boxes. Look, but I didn't. I, I, yeah, but I. They're orange. But they're not black. Well, they're you know what the old joke among comedians was. A lot of people use this in their act. Uh, was uh, you know they have this uh, these accidents, these airplane crashes, and uh, then they go find the black box and they can tell what happened in the plane. And of course, the black box survived. So why don't they just make the plane out of the same stuff <laughs> they make the black boxes out of? That's good. You know, the black boxes in airplanes, of course, are not black. I don't know. No, they're, they're yellow. Like they're yellow. Fluorescent orange yeah. or something. Yeah. You want to be able to find them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. By the way, there's a movie I was watching. We've been trying to watch it. It's two and a half hours long. Has anybody seen The Five Bloods? No, I didn't see it yet. Any good? It's been nominated for an Academy Award. Oh. It's it terrible. It is boring. <laughs> That's a Netflix movie? It, that's a, it, it's With the um, black guys that go back to Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? I, I, 45 minutes. I sucked yeah, it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's Spike Lee, and it is so just full of messaging that my head starts throbbing. Oh, you yeah. know? Boring. Uh, it, yeah. And it gets worse. We watched I mean, a, a good hour and a half of it, and it just it just doesn't. Get any better? Yes, uh, uh, Alan. Alan, you got to hold it down a little bit, Alan. But what? What? There was a shooting today of five people in Texas somewhere. Or something oh, wait a minute! Like I was talking about the Five Bloods. 
Oh, yeah, I'm but sorry. We, but we could get back to that. There's been another okay. shooting, another mm -hmm. mass shooting. This and time there was only up. one. Well, only one death, Charlie. No, I think there were more than one. No, no, no I think I that was in five. South Carolina. Never mind, I don't know. Oh, no, I don't know. Texas. South Carolina is a football player. Yeah, he football played player in South Carolina. Yeah. Well, I think right. Biden today finally said he's had it with with guns in this country. He said there's just too many deaths now. He said we haven't reported the fact that I think over the last two weeks there have been 200 deaths by by firearms, uh, and uh, he said this is enough is enough. You know we're the embarrassment of the world. We've got to yeah. do something about this. And to everybody who ever gripes about, oh, I don't want them to take my guns away. Well, you know, if a kid is playing with a toy and he's abusing that toy, you take the toy take away, away from him, you know? And I think maybe it's time we started taking some of these guns away from from people. Yeah. And I don't think that what Biden was asking for today was profound. He's, it, he's uh, not going to get much. He needs, he needs this part of the Senate more than 50-50 for a lot of this gun control stuff yeah and it i guess the news said he needed 10 senators that are republicans to he's not, he's not go his get way it. and it's, that's not going to happen unfortunately is, is, I mean, is i don't know i mean guns are they really a, a an issue that's it should be an issue that's political or is it not just rational discussion about the kinds of guns we allow to be out there how about yeah. how about the guns don't kill people people kill people how about maybe vetting people a little bit well i don't believe i guns? no 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 if people do kill people <laughs> but it's people with guns that kill people yeah and knives and clubs well and, no yeah. yeah but i'm saying but that you know i understand you know this whole idea that it's people that kill people no it's people who are armed who kill people you know with a knife little harder to kill somebody you got to get up close to them okay you got to with a gun you can with a rifle you can be across the street yeah you and know tiger can't sue bentley for the crash uh, right right that's got to do with killing yeah. <laughs> because you're seeing the gun oh you know, i see what the you car, mean the car didn't hurt tiger and ruin oh. the rest of his career tiger that was a bentley what? Yeah, the Bentley. What, no, oh, what, no, it was a, it was a van though, wasn't it, or something? It was a Genesis SUV. Genesis, Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah Genesis. Oh. No, okay. It was all. I think it was owned by 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 the golf people. Mm -hmm. had their, yeah, it was a it was a yeah. uh, tournament car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, he'll never get to drive their cars again. Yeah. How you doing, uh, Tony? We haven't talked. To you. you haven't said a word tonight. Oh, I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just enjoying the conversation. I was kind of like, uh, I, it's, it's kind of hard to follow that whole trial because when you, it's like you said, when you keep watching it, it's kind of disgusting to really see, really, with this, with the police yeah. officer. Well, I mean, you know, uh, certainly for looky lose, it's a, it's a godsend, you know. Uh, but I don't know how much of it I want to watch of this guy's neck being, you know restrained by a policeman's knee i get the idea i don't need to no. see it over and over and over and over i don't again. get the idea it's wrong well the, it's wrong of course but i get the idea i get you know i okay you showed me what went on oh. I've, I've seen it before i mean what i said who can be a jury a ju uh, part of the jury in this trial none of us because we were all witnesses to the crime mm -hmm. you know and uh, it's it's uh, we're all, we're all witnesses. Uh, it was like when uh, Lee Harvey Oswald got killed. That was the first time we ever saw anything like that happen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and and we were all witnesses. You know, I was sitting. I was sitting there at home. I was, I was sitting there at home. I was I was home from the Navy. I had, uh, you saw him get shot live on TV? A couple yes. of weeks off, yeah. And I'm yeah, sitting yeah. there and watching them. They're leading Oswald out. Jack Ruby. Yeah. And yeah. and all of a sudden, this guy comes out in front of him and shoots him. And he, the next Ruby. thing you know, he's dead. Yep. 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 He was in police custody. They were escorting yep. him somewhere. Yeah, but And uh, Jack Ruby jumped out with a 38 revolver and shot him in the chest. Mm -hmm. We saw it live here. 
<laughs> yeah, and and so I mean, I was but all of us. Saw I was an live. eyewitness live yeah. to that to that to that yeah. particular crime. I, I was watching that. a documentary on it, and they showed the TV footage of it. It's almost like Ruby. I mean, I know it's going to be the same old thing, but. He, how does he get that close to take him out? I mean, you know that. Well, no, he, uh, how he got that close to take him out, Jack Ruby was one of these guys that used to hang out at the police yeah. department. You know, he ran a strip club, and he's a, he cozied up to all the cops, okay? Uh, and he he liked the cops, and he would go. In fact, he would come by and bring them donuts, you know? Now, you know, imagine these are cops, and he brings them yeah. donuts. Oh, what are the chances? Police, what are the chances that they would like that? Yeah. Um, but it, he he would bring them donuts. He you know he give them passes to his club and things like that. Absolutely. So they all knew Jack. He was just like uh, you know he was part of the the, the scenery in 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 Dallas. And uh, so when that day came. He simply was able to walk down the ramp, and all the cops knew who he was, and he just yeah. walked in and started watching. you got to remember, in those days, we weren't as protective of people as we are now. I mean, if we were that protective of Lee Harvey Oswald, he would have had a, a bulletproof vest on when they were transporting. They, they weren't developed at that point, but yeah, yeah you're right. So uh, uh, it, it, Jack Ruby just was able to walk right down there and, and do what he did. Somebody said Jack Ruby was connected to the mafia. Is that correct? Uh, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but he had a lot of cop friends, and right, he owned a strip. You know, if we wanted to, we could spend the next, the like rest of the history of this show tearing yeah. apart the whole Kennedy assassination. No, we don't want to go down that and, and you don't want to go down that rabbit hole because there's no answer. Yeah. You know, there's no real answer. I maintain it was a mob hit, okay? Mm -hmm. at, at bottom line. But uh, we're never going to know. And I mean, he had to have help, right? Because the way he got shot, they always say the magic bullet. I was watching a documentary on it, and he had to have, there had to be another shooter, Alex. Maybe. Think. You know, yeah. I mean, we never, we'll never know. Here's, here's what it is, is that there are certain records of it that are being kept secret. And uh, I think uh, Johnson made sure they were secret and they would mm -hmm. never be revealed till everybody who was alive, who was directly involved in that, whether it was members of the Kennedy family, were still alive. Now, I think we're coming up on that where most yeah. of the Kennedy family is dead by now. But I, I don't know if the day is going to come or one day they go, OK, all the, all the records are going to be released now and we find out really what what may have gone on. Or we yeah. may find out it was no different than we believed it, you know, that in fact Lee Harvey Oswald was that good a shot or it was a good freak accident that he could shoot that well. He was and, like you, Alex. He shot an <laughs> expert in the military. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't know. You know, I'm, I used to say on the air in New York when still people were calling the show and it was still, you know, hours of discussion about the Kennedy assassination. I said, I think I have the most controversial theory of all. And people would say, what? I said, I think Oswald did it. <laughs> and that's really was the most controversial you could be because everybody's going on, oh, no, and it was this, and it was the people up on the on the, uh, the grassy knoll, grassy really. knoll, and uh, it was yeah. this, and it was that, and uh, you know. So, so we have we have the technology now to slow down the video and see. No, we we were slowing it down then. We they oh, were yeah. analyzing. They were, I was three. No, but they were frame analyzing. Frame they were frame, analyzing yeah. every single frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, I was saying that after a while, when you do that sort of thing, it kind of becomes a blur, you know. Yeah. It, it, it just it, you lose all sense of it, you know, and uh, you you always find something that says, oh, you know, they they were making. Uh, there, there's even a thing. Anybody ever remember the panelist on What's My Line? Dorothy Kilgallen. Yeah, yeah. She was a writer for uh, for uh, um, the New York Herald Tribune, I think. Yeah. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. She uh, she she died mysteriously, yeah. and they say that she was about ready to break the Kennedy assassination yeah. wide open. Yeah, and they claim that she was killed because she had that information. Wow. 
And uh, because she was not an old broad, I mean, she wasn't a young ch broad either. But you know, she was she was uh, she wasn't old, and uh, she had, was in relatively good health. Nobody knew of health problems, and all of a sudden, she's dead. Died yeah. here in New York, and uh, at the, all the rumors started flying around that it was because she had the goods on the Kennedy assassination, and mm. she was a, a. I think she had interviewed. <laughs> Jack Ruby, who was in prison at that time, and that she was about ready to break the whole thing wide open. Wow. So, you know, so you even had stuff like that going on, those kind of rumors. Uh, but, I think Giacana pushed the button. Huh? I think Sam Giacana pushed the button. Uh, and I don't think so. I so think, what? I think, what? I think it was, I think it was the, basically it was the, the New Orleans mob. Okay. Um, yeah. The reason I say this real quick is that he believed that he helped get Kennedy in office, and when you're working the mob, you you know the the Kennedy's supposed to reward him. Well, no, instead. they they think they think that uh, there are some theories that it was a mob hit, and that it had a lot to do with uh, the Cuban invasion and all of that. Oh, you know, okay. and this fact that the CIA wasn't backed up and the CIA right. CIA. Oh, this oh, here we go. We're going with this whole thing. Talking about and I've got like I've got like one. I've got like I've got like, two, I've got like, I, I've got like two minutes left here, but the basic the, one of the basic theories is is that uh, the CIA uh, got a hold of the mob, and they wanted them to kill Castro, and so there was a tie up between the FBI and the CIA rather, and and uh, and the mob. And both of these people, once the Bay of Pigs took place, both of these uh, groups were not too happy with Jack Kennedy. And so they think, the main theory running around is, is that it was a conspiracy between uh, the CIA and uh, the mob. Okay. What do you think, Kevin? Am I, is it right or wrong? Oh, you betcha. Okay. You cracked it right open. Josh, you're the big political guy. Possibility? Yeah. I spent a lot of time on the Kennedy assassination at one point when I was oh, younger. I suppose that's possible, yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. So that is one of the theories. Am I not wrong? I've seen my share of the documentary. Uh, document yeah. uh, documentary. Documentation. Well. Documentation. Is Mr. Babe Russell. <laughs> yeah. Josh, Josh, how's your wife doing? I'm doing good. Good? good. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, good. I'm glad yep, she's, she's doing good. She's just waiting to have her surgery. Oh, oh she had a scan okay. today, so she's doing good. Yeah. Okay. Hey, good listen, uh, that's the theme playing, Jeff. You've been very quiet tonight, but mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, well, you know, it's always just things. nice to see you there. Uh, um, uh, Brian, good to have you here again. Charlie Wallace, great. Love having uh, our Scott on. He's now kind of. I think you're now officially a regular. Three in a row. Yeah, or as they call you in Boston, a regular. Uh, and, of course, uh, Josh, always good to have you here. Next time you're on, let's talk a little more about the Kennedy assassination since you seem to know a bit about it. Uh, John Larkin, uh, Alan, uh, uh, Kevin. Oh, God, my pal Kevin. I love Kevin. Uh, uh, jo uh, Tony. Everybody loves Tony. Uh, t t Turd Ferguson, great having you here. Turd. I love saying that. And, of course, uh, 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 Trucker Steve and Rocky is, and Rocky. is a, a companion. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back, okay? There they go, folks. There's the citizen panel, uh, and uh, we'll assemble another one tomorrow night. There's going to be one assembling right now over on uh, the next show that's coming up, which is... Uh, is uh, uh, Jack Bishop and the intersection. Uh, he'll be taking your calls on Skype and the, you call GabNet Live, GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life at 1030 Eastern Daylight, Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please, whatever you do, we're getting down to the end Wear a mask and stay safe out there.